Hi friends, Mickey Mankus here and welcome to Out the Back Door. Today I want to share with you how my husband and I made a vacuum chamber in order to do large jars and multiple ones. Join me. If you saw my video that I did on using a food saver vacuum canister for a vacuum chamber, I showed you that I couldn't fit half gallon jugs into it. I could do the quart jars, but not the half gallon. And I was bound to determine I was gonna figure out a way in order to do the half gallon jars. I thought it would be easier to build a chamber in order to vacuum seal these half gallon jars instead of one by one in using those jar saver tops and then using my food saver or the brake bleeder. So, I sat down and I stopped to think about what could I use to start creating this? Because I have seen them online. You can actually buy vacuum chambers, but the largest one I could find was consider the three gallon. And I know height wise it would fit the half gallon jar. But as far as getting multiple ones in there, I don't know if I could even get two of them in there side by side. It was very small and it ran about $165. So I thought, no, I know I can figure this out. So Mr. Mankus is really good at engineering and putting things together himself. So I sat down with him and I said, can I get your help, please? This is what I want to accomplish. What parts do you feel I'm going to need? Because I was ordering incorrect parts. So should have started with him to begin with. So anyway, I'm gonna show you how this works and then I'll go step by step how we did assemble this. What I'm starting with is my Presto 23 quart pressure canner. All right, and here's my half gallon jar. Now, if you did see my video when I was using the um, food saver canister for a vacuum chamber, um, remember I did explain that when you're putting the top on, it doesn't matter if it's a Tatler lid, if it's a regular metal canning flat, um, if you're using any other type of repurposed jar from the store that had like, say for example, spaghetti sauce in it and has the lug type uh, with a little button on the top. When you put them on or with your band, you're going to put it on loosely. All it's <laughs> You're going to put it on looser than you would if you were actually canning and we say fingertip type. So anyway, it's on there loose, but it's holding the top in place for allowing the excess oxygen and the air to get pulled out of it when we do the vacuum. So in this 23 quart pressure canner, I'm able to get four gallons in here easily. So let me get the rest of the jars and I'll get it loaded up. Okay, I've just placed my lid on top of my canner, the gasket and everything is in there as normal. And I'm gonna lock this into position as if we were going to use the pressure canner. And it does look somewhat familiar to our pressure canner, but yet it's different. And I'll explain all the parts that I have um, added to it. All right, if you didn't see my uh, another unboxing video, um, I was so excited I had a, um, a vacuum pump show up, and this is what I had planned on using it for. But what happened was I didn't get all the parts until recently, so I wasn't able to do the video until now. I've got this hooked up, and we are going to, um, I've got my gauge here. I'm gonna bring it up to just over 15 pounds, and then I'm gonna show you what happens with these jars in here. Okay, I've turned that off. Remember this pressure release valve um, that pops off in case of the pressure becoming way too high? It slightly leaks. As you can see, the pressure's dropping down below. But just unscrew this, and it's released the pressure. Now we can remove our top. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Okay, 
They're all sealed up well, like I anticipated. Okay, so I'm gonna open up one of the jars. That's sealed well. So you can see what kind of a vacuum, how it pulled out all the excess oxygen and air. Now to me, that's an excellent seal. So um, I'm gonna be able to do four half gallons at one time, or I can actually put my smaller jars in here, use one of the canning racks to put in between, and then stack more jars in there. So the more that you're gonna fill this up, the faster the pressure is, the vacuum is going to pull and draw out all the excess air. Um, the less that you have in there, it's going to take longer because it's got to pull out more air. The two biggest parts that you're going to need for this vacuum chamber is a pressure canner and a vacuum pump. Right now I don't need the bottom of the canner, so I'm going to set this aside so we can talk about all the parts that we've done on the top. Okay. First of all, our vent pipe, where we would normally put our regulator on, we want to block off that hole. What I used is a piece of 3 16 vinyl tubing in here. I just cut a short section. Actually, I took it out of my brake bleeder kit, and I just chopped off a little hunk there, and it fit down on top of the pipe vent very, very well. Then I also have um, a connector in here. It's a 3 16 to um, a 1 8 inch male connector. It's a barbed connector. I slip that down into the uh, vinyl tubing and then I also have a 1 8 inch cap that I put on here. So I mean you could probably figure out anything. Maybe tape on top would work, you know, duct tape or something, but I wanted to put the least amount of hardware on here and not have it look real gaudy. If you notice when I was using uh, the vacuum chamber here that I was holding down on the emergency blowout plug, um, there is a slight bit of a leak here. So when I was pushing down on it, that seemed to work very well so that the vacuum was able to pull the air out a lot faster than if I had my hand away from it. I suppose you could put a piece of duct tape over it and that would seal it and you wouldn't have to hang on to it. Um, or if you decide you want to do something like this and you're going to leave it permanently to use it this way, you could also put like a silicone bead around it and that would stop it from leaking. I don't know that I'm going to do that yet, even though I don't use my Presto pressure can um, I'm thinking this is probably going to be a good application. I'm going to be able to get some good use out of it now by um, using it as a vacuum chamber. But just in case I change my mind, I don't want to really mess with that little emergency plug. So I'm going to leave it like that. The next thing I want to talk about is our gauge. Now, we had a pressure gauge in here, and I had to change it to a vacuum gauge. And I went and I bought a 1 8 inch, um, as I mentioned earlier. I didn't console with Mr. Mankus right away, and he could have probably steered me in the right direction. But I ordered a few parts and started trying to put this together on my own, and things just weren't going real smooth. And the gauge that I purchased is a 1 8 inch. So most of my parts are going to be a 1 8 inch pipe fittings. Um, quarter inch would probably be a better option but this is working fine. So I've got my vacuum gauge here, and the next step that we had to go and put in is we put a T in here. So it's a 1 8 inch T, and so that the, um, the gauge was able to fit into the T, and then off to the side here, there's a fitting. It's a 1 8 inch male to a quarter inch flare um, adapter connector. And we screwed that in, and that's what our hose is hooking on to. The next thing that we attach to the T that you can't really see right now is a 1 8 inch close pipe nipple. And once we had stuck that into the bottom of here, then we went and we slid up a 3 8 inch washer and a 3 8 inch gasket material onto that nipple. Okay. So we've got that and we flipped it over and we pushed it up through the hole. Then 
on that nipple, then we put down another gasket, the 3 8 inch gasket, and then another washer. And once we got those in place, then we put a 1 8 inch um, nut onto the bottom. These are all pipe fittings. So, and I tried to stick with brass just so it looked nice. I wasn't going to go and veer off to galvanize or anything like that. So that's all that the inside looks like. Um, plain, simple. It looks pretty much the way that it did to begin with before I removed the original gauge. So that's our little uh, assembly um, of the parts that we have redone on top of the pressure canner top. Okay, the next thing that I had purchased, um, it's a generic vacuum pump. This one is a one-third horse. Uh, let me see what the model is. RS 1.5. Okay, it's four cubic feet per minute um, that it will pump out. This is used a lot for like refrigeration, uh, refrigerant removal, recharging, air conditioners, different things like that. So I went with this route. I'll leave links to the items that I did purchase through Amazon, um, this and the hose that I bought. I'll leave those below. So if you do want to check this out, that's fine. Okay, this is only a one stage um, vacuum pump. I think I picked this up for like $65 and I've seen other people buy you know, on eBay, $80 or so, do your research. There's a lot of off brands out there. They're all the same thing. They're all probably made in China. But anyway, um, this is what I decided to go with to give it a shot and it works well. I wanna share a little something about it. When I got this, the instruction book, I would say if it was written by the Chinese or whatever, they used um, a translator program or something to put it into English and it's very hard to follow. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so that's why I want to show you a couple of things on the pump to begin with. Okay, even though the diagram says that you're going to put oil in here and oil in here, you do not. This is actually a vent. You're going to put your oil into this little red. Um, you would unscrew this and pour your oil in there. Um, it does come with 200 milliliter of the oil that is required to put in here and there's also a little window down here showing you your minimum and your maximum level of how much to pour in so when I first started this um, I did end up putting the whole entire bottle in and it went a little bit past the max but so far it's been okay and then also there is an on off switch in the back here and then over on this side we have an inlet and this is for your hose and what I have here is a refrigerant hose um, I don't know the specifics of this I believe these are quarter inch fittings because this is a quarter inch flare fitting on here an inlet don't try to replace this because the pump is actually hooked down there's a valve inside of here that is necessary for the vacuum pump okay so what I'm going to do is you've got two different ends here and I'm just going to screw this into the inlet and it doesn't have to be super tight because this isn't something that has to be precise for the vacuum canning okay and then the other end I would be attaching to the adapter on the T on top of the pressure canner here and that's all there is to it so when I initially had tried this I did not have it hooked up to the canner yet but I did have the hose hooked to the inlet and it's got a 110 plug in and then I just turned it on and I let it run for oh maybe about 15 seconds or so just to get the oil lubricated through everything and then turned it off and then I did hook it up to here and I ran um, my test to see how it went and I got so excited because everything went so well. I was trying to use my food saver to use on the canner here to pull the excess air out and I was using you know the regular food saver hoses and everything you know I was makeshifting and whatnot and the problem was the motor in the food saver just isn't powerful enough. It kept running and running and running and I thought I'm going to burn out my food saver and I didn't want to do that. So I opted. I had to decide on something else. And Mr. Mancus builds these really cool 
minnow uh, containers out of coolers so that we keep our minnows in and they aerate so that they keep the minnows alive in the boat instead of in a live well or hanging over the side, you know, when we go fishing. So he said, hey, this concept can work with this also, the way that he had built that we were able to put this together. So that was just an excellent idea. So I really wanted to share this with you because I know there's people out there like me that want to be able to um, vacuum seal their half gallon jars without using the jar saver tops from Food Saver or whatever in order to vacuum seal them. That you would like to do multiple jars at one time also, if, especially if you've got a lot like I do. Um, this is an excellent way of preserving your dried foods for long shelf life. Um, this is going to be a super excellent way to store flour because you don't want to put anything that's a fine flour and run it through your food saver or any type of a vacuum sealer of that type because when you're vacuum sealing it what it does is it starts pulling that powder up through the hose and it gets into the motor it's going to kill off your your vacuum sealer so you don't want to end up doing that so this is going to be an excellent way to preserve and store your flowers, uh, say powdered sugar, cocoa powder, uh, baking soda, baking powder, anything like that. Um, this way you can vacuum seal it for a long shelf life and you don't have to worry about it getting pulled up in the hose and wrecking anything. So if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'd really like to hear from you. So until next time, you have a wonderful day. God bless.